This committee was constituted to support and complement the efforts of government to address the global epidemic we all are now familiar with, coronavirus, COVID-19. Our terms of reference as a committee are to make available technical recommendations and support across all sectors of our economy for the consideration of government and the attention and action of all Ghanaians in this very important war against COVID-19. Indeed, it is a war we must win. Today marks the 12th day of our own battle with COVID-19. We have gone from two imported cases at the outset to 52 as of today, including recorded cases of local transmission. We have now tragically recorded two deaths. May their soul rest in perfect peace. Many of our compatriots who have tested positive have reported contact with others in their communities. But despite great efforts by the Ghana Health Service and the Ministry of Health, many of the nearly 600 of them have not yet been successfully contacted and isolated. Under these circumstances, we are out of time for wishful thinking. The lessons from other nations should guide our thinking about how best to evolve our strategy to contend with the realities of the day. We recognize the efforts of government in actually taking the necessary steps to reduce the risk of recording additional imported cases. The decision to close our borders could not have been an easy one, given the repercussions for trade, travel, and tourism. However, it came rather late. But our land borders span nearly 2,500 kilometers. They are hard to monitor and porous. So we cannot presume the closure of our air and sea ports to be sufficient defense against imported cases. Our neighbors in all directions are struggling with COVID-19 too. For Ghana's crucial essential services like water supply and power, how are the staff being cared for? Are they being tested for COVID-19 and sequestered? Is there a shift system in place to ensure that these essential services remain uninterrupted during this period in the event of staff members becoming infected? Considering that the reserves, reserve capacities of the majority of Ghanaians are quite limited, or in some cases non-existent, we should ensure that the National Food Buffer Stock Company is adequately augmented to ensure we don't have a shortage of food. We are currently experiencing a rapidly escalating humanitarian crisis, which will demand that we collaborate and work in synergy to stop this virus and protect our citizens. One of the key preventive measures in combating this disease is contact tracing. Contact tracing can only work better in an environment where the public has full disclosure of the movements of infected persons. The timeliness and accuracy of information put out by government and regulatory of agencies is therefore imperative. Conflicting information breeds confusion and mistrust, which increases the vulnerability of the public to fake news and fake cures. To be effective at implementing solutions to any of these measures outlined by my colleagues in a timely manner. And if we are to give ourselves a fighting chance, we will have to act now. The window of opportunity, as we have already said, should be measured in days, and certainly not in weeks. But this, or any of those, or any other proposal, will require a rapid deployment of funds, I mean money, to procure the needed equipment and supplies, improve awareness, and accelerate our readiness, reinforce the healthcare system, establish a moral sound safety net for the vulnerable, and safeguard our economy and enterprises against the inevitable shocks. And we must be able to use these funds in response to the evolving situation in the interest of our nation, Ghana which requires us to also have great flexibility to reassess and reprioritize over the coming 
weeks and days. We are aware that our government has approached the IMF and the World Bank for an amount close to one billion United States dollars. We wish to say that we harbor sincere reservations about the wisdom and of that course under the time pressures we face. We are reliably informed and the government is indeed aware that any such facility would not be available to us as a country until the second or the third week of April 2020. That timeline is constrained by the meeting schedules of the board of directors of the respective organizations, the IMF and the World Bank, and the processes involved in the receiving the funds, even under an emergency approval. Our current state of readiness and the exponential growth of the plug we are fighting suggests that we cannot wait that long. It is, it is with this in mind that my colleagues and I wish to propose an alternative strategy that will avail Ghanaians immediately, immediately of the needed resources to drastically, uh, drastically escalate our readiness and resilience. We humbly appeal to the government to amend the proposed utilization of the three billion euro bond proceeds to make funds available immediately to cater for the COVID-19 related expenses and the possible adverse economic shocks that may occur. The proposed utilization plan for the 2020 euro bond proceeds as originally presented to the Finance Committee of Parliament and later to the plenary for approval, indicated that the proceeds were tied to three main expenditure items, namely budget support, one, two, restructuring of the energy sector, and three, liability management. The distribution of the proceeds according to the proposed utilization plan that was submitted by government to parliament were as follows at an exchange rate of 5.72 US dollars to the city. The budget said they are going to support the budget with a budget support of 1 billion United States dollars. One and two, to restructure the energy sector debt of 1 billion US dollars and the liability management of 1 billion, making a total of 3 billion, translating to 17.1 billion United States. Ghana cities. We humble appeal to government to amend the proposed plan to address the pressing coronavirus disease 2019 related expenditure and the financing gap that is inevitably awaiting us as a result of this pandemic to keep Ghanaians safe, to safeguard the Ghanaian, uh, the Ghanaian economy against its potential macroeconomic shocks and revenue shortfalls whilst we await the expected IMF and the World Bank loans in the near future. It is our view that the proposed restructure of the energy sector does not constitute a priority at this time in the face of a rapid escalation in the COVID-19 cases in Ghana. The government may have to consider deferring the planned restructuring of the energy sector to make available immediately one billion United States dollars, translating to 5.7 billion Ghana cities to fight any further spread of the pandemic. In times of emergency, in economics and finance, we have something we call reprogramming of development program. We wish to propose to review non-urgent expenditures in the 2020 budget so that funds will be made immediately available for the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Ghana indeed has already recorded a total of 52 cases and two deaths, unfortunately. This worrying development requires urgent and pragmatic measures to manage and contain the situation. The economic impact of the outbreak is likely to affect almost all sectors of the economy, hence the need for immediate funding to minimize the effect of this outbreak. We hope that government will review this recommendation 
favorably and act immediately to ensure that precious Ghanaian lives are saved and that there can be rapid restoration of economic activities in the wake of these difficult times. We owe no less to every household and businesses in this country. May the good Lord protect all of us and may God bless our homeland. Thank you very much. I would like to start by re-echoing Dr. Ayensu's words to the media that at this point we need a committed media collaborating with government and other institutions to ensure that there is a transformation process to reflect the reality of reporting in this country as we confront COVID-19. I am saying this because the moment of doing business as usual is gradually slipping away. And this is the time for all of us to consider this pandemic as a crisis. And in this situation, we cannot and will not leave anyone behind. Indeed, government in the several weeks that have passed have made some very sound recommendations and defined certain actions to mitigate the spread of this virus today. I can say that this is not enough. This is not enough to flatten the curve of spreading this virus, to save lives, build confidence in our people, and get communities mobilized to support the response. Should we lose the war in our communities, then we have lost the war in the country. 